it's Samantha. Welcome to another video. Today I'm in the comfort of my bed again while my baby is sleeping, which is why I'm not talking super loud. Um, I wanted to make this video today about my back surgery um, that I had because um, the cancer in my body metastasized to my spine and it fractured the L2 vertebrae. I'll insert a picture of that if you are interested and it was extremely painful. I have another video explaining how we found that out and what I was doing on the day that I went to the ER and all of that. So if you're interested in that, check out that other video. This video is going to be all about the back surgery that I had to have and how painful it was and my whole experience with that. If this eye can keeps watering, like I guess you can kind of tell it's like red, it's because of the medication that I'm on. It did this last time too when I was on hormone targeted therapy medication. But anyway, I wanted to make this video before I forgot all the details because I'm already forgetting some of the details. Maybe I'll make another video later that's more helpful for people having this surgery because this one's mainly going to be just like my experience with it, which I think it is kind of helpful. I don't want to scare you, but also like, some of this is just the reality of getting the surgery and I kind of wish that I was more prepared and knew how bad it was going to be, but I never would have expected just, I never would have expected the, the events that just happened. So the L2 vertebrae was fractured and it kind of was like going into like the spinal cord. I don't know medical talk, but basically I was in Alaska and I was supposed to be moving back to Virginia. But my oncologist in Virginia was like, you shouldn't get on a plane with your back like that. And I was like, I can't even imagine sitting on a plane with my back like this because whenever I would ride in the car, I'd have to recline the seat like a lot and I'd have to hold on to stuff um, in like, I, I would get pushed in a wheelchair, but I would have to like hold myself up with my arms because like my back couldn't hold myself up and I like couldn't walk like it was in, so hard to walk. I had to hold on to people and kind of like lean over them. And sometimes I was crawling and it was actually horrible. And um, I think that looking back on it now, I probably should have just, you know, had surgery the day that I went to the ER. Um, and I should have had like an emergency surgery and it just should have been like that. Um, but you know, when I went to the ER, they sent me home um, I don't know why, like still looking back on it, it's crazy to me because the amount of pain that I was in, I should not have been sent home. My oncologist is really good friends with a um, neurosurgeon and that neurosurgeon was good friends with this neurosurgeon that was in Alaska. So they recommended me to go to that neurosurgeon, but the neurosurgeon was in Anchorage and we lived in Wasilla, so that's about an hour drive, which was really hard for me to be in the car for that long, but we did it. I met with the surgeon and she was super, super nice and she was great and we talked through everything. She like went over like my fracture and um, I met her other partner because she was like, we're gonna get you scheduled for Monday and like it's possible, I'm probably going to be the one doing the surgery, but like here's my other partner in case like she's the one doing it and the other person was also super nice um but then like they looked at me during the appointment they're like do we need to do an emergency right now because they could see like how much pain i was in and like this amount of pain that i was in was less than i was in the day i went to the er because i was taking all these pain medicines now and um kind of i had learned how to move around without hurting myself as bad which consisted of me holding on to either my husband or my dad because my mom and dad had flown up to help to get down the stairs and get into the car. It was this whole process that would take like 15, 20 minutes. Anyway, it was it was rough. So like I got more used to like moving around. So I was like, eh, I don't think so. But they were like, you seem like you're in a lot of pain. And like they were actually recognizing that I was in like tons of pain and they could see like the, Im the MRI images and could tell like I don't understand how you're walking around right now because it doesn't really make sense how it was. Um, 
I was like, no, it's okay, Monday will be fine. Like, I'll have time to like get ready for the surgery because the surgery, they, they were scheduling it for the next Monday. And they were like, okay, they gave me all these instructions. I needed to go, I think, I think it was a Thursday because I think the next day I needed to go get another MRI because the surgery that I was going to be having, what do they call it? A fusion, a spinal fusion surgery. Um, but basically what they did was, so like the L2 vertebrae was fractured. I'm gonna put that picture up again. L2 vertebrae was fractured. So what they were trying to do was put screws up into one of the ones that was healthy and um, screws up above it and below it and then put rods in that would kind of like straighten the spine back uh, to normal. I don't know if that was a good way to explain it or not, um, but basically that's what I've got in my back right now. I've got screws and it's annoying because I can feel them because they kind of like poke out of my back. Another whole thing was that we knew that we had I had cancer all throughout my spine in various places but we weren't even going to get to treating that until I got back to Virginia and I couldn't get back to Virginia until I had this surgery and recovered from this surgery um, because I couldn't get on a plane in my current state. So this surgery was not to treat any cancer, it was not to remove any cancer. It was just to get my back in a like working condition that was like good enough to like get on a plane. We just kept like reminding ourselves like we have to do this one step at a time like We'll get rid of the cancer eventually, but right now all we have to do is make it so I can walk again. So yeah, I met with a surgeon. She was super helpful, um, super nice, and we scheduled the surgery for the next Monday. The night before my surgery, I had to shower. It was a requirement that I used antibacterial soap and showered everything and I like, washed everything. But the problem was, <laughs> there was no way I was getting in a shower because we had a tub shower and it would have been a lot easier if I had one that I could have just walked into, but there was no way that I would have been able to get into a tub shower. Um, I wouldn't have been able to like lift my legs over and my arms over to get into it. Um, the only thing that I could think of was I was like, I could wash my hair because I had long hair. Like now I don't because I had chemo and stuff, but I had long hair. So I was like, I could maybe like lean over and wash my hair in the shower, but the rest, I have no idea how I'd get in there. And so what we came up with was we got a swimming pool and it was like a little blow up pool that we could fit into the bathroom and our shower head you can remove. So we, we blew up the swimming pool and pushed it into the bathroom. My hair we washed from me leaning over the bathtub and my hair going into the regular bathtub, but the rest of my body we had to use um, this pool and my husband basically did it like bathed me um like i was on my hands and knees and it was so painful because it was like i needed to get this done and it was like only a certain period of time where i was able to even be on my hands and knees like that and he was just like rubbing the soap on me and using the shower head and showering me i completely forgot about this like there was just like all this crazy stuff that had to happen to get me ready for this surgery and to just like live and exist and anyway so um after I had that shower my surgery I had to like get to the hospital really early in the morning I think I had to be there at like four in the morning or something so I had to leave really early and I felt like horrible because this was the first time I was leaving my daughter and I knew she is like the worst sleeper and she always needs me at night and I was just like, I'm going to be in the hospital for like, they said like I could be in the hospital for like three to five days. And I was like, I, what am I going to do not being with her at night? And it made me like super sad because she was still breastfeeding. And I knew that they were going to be giving me medication where um, I wouldn't be able to breastfeed for a certain period of time. And so it was just like stressing me out like crazy. Like I wasn't worried about the surgery and it's funny because they say that this surgery is like one of the most painful surgeries you can have, but I like literally didn't care. Like the only thing that I cared about was my baby and I had to leave her like whatever time we had to wake up in the morning to get to the hospital, she was asleep and I had to leave her with my sister and my mom trying to like 
keep her happy and my dad and I just felt so bad and they so they, the plan was my husband was going to take me to the hospital for the surgery and then when my daughter woke up then the rest of my family was going to come and you know wait for my surgery to come be done and visit me and, and stuff in the hospital and like the whole way there like I was crying when I got to the hospital I would like you know have these moments when I would just like start tearing up and it was really early in the morning and I remember just feeling like I haven't gotten any sleep because of my back like over these past few days and I'm just like so worried about my daughter and how she's going to sleep and is she going to eat all this happened so fast that we didn't have like any transition period to try to get her to drink out of bottles or like anything we had breast milk stored away for her to drink and we also had formula so like we had plenty of food for her but i was still so worried about it. i just remember that the check-in process took forever i was like trying to sit in this wheelchair and like the wheelchairs would like do these bumps like whenever they would go over things and the, the wheelchair I had was like really old and rackety and whatever and it was like painful to be pushed in it and oh, I was also on my period like that was oh, I was just like of all the things that could happen I started my period like the day before or something um and so I was just like I've never actually been on my period before surgery before. I was like, what do I do? Because they say you have to like undress from, I think I completely took, I think I undressed completely and just wore a gown. And um, they were like, oh, you can keep on your underwear and here's a pad and they gave me a pad. And this nurse was like, you're gonna need one of these IVs or whatever for this surgery. And she's like, that really hurts when they put it in. And I was like, okay. And then she was like, oh, you're having this surgery. This surgery is really bad. You're gonna be in like tons of pain. Like it's going to be really, really, really painful. And it was like, I, she was telling me all this stuff and like, I didn't care because like I said, I was only worried about my baby. And she was telling me that this was gonna be painful and this was gonna be painful and I was gonna, and I was just sitting there like being like, okay. And it was like she was trying to get me to react, like trying to get me to back out or like, I don't know what her goal was, but it wasn't like, you know, when doctors prepare you by being like, okay, like this is going to hurt. Like, cause I appreciate that when, when people tell you like, actually that it's going to hurt instead of just like being like oh you'll just feel a pinch and then it's like super painful i appreciate that but the way that she was saying this was not like that it was just it was like she was trying to get this reaction out of me it was so weird and i was just like what is her problem but i was just like i also don't care so like i didn't react i didn't say anything to her i was just kind of like okay and i was polite to her i was like okay thank you for everything that she did and um the anesthesiologist came to talk to me and she kind of like gave me this look like oh you have this nurse like and I was like maybe this nurse is just like not good with people and like everyone in this hospital knows that she's <laughs> just like kind of weird she said something to me that made me like think that and so I talked to like I can't remember it exactly because like I said this was such a long time ago the nerve it was the nerve block she said you're gonna get this you're gonna have to do a nerve block and that hurts a lot taking it out hurts a lot too and so it's like super painful and I was like okay um but they did do that to me after I was under the anesthesia so I never experienced the, that pain from what she was talking about but then she also was like this surgery is going to be extremely painful you're gonna be in so much pain after the surgery but whatever like i said like i literally didn't care what was going on the only the only thing i was thinking about was my baby i was trying to pump breast milk while i was there but nothing was coming out so um i didn't work i didn't i only got like a few drops and i didn't actually get any milk so that made me stressed out but I had pumped like right before we left. So like it hadn't been that much time. Like it was like a few hours and I was like, this time of day is never a time when my baby eats. So like, it makes sense why I wasn't producing any milk, but it was just still stressing me out. Cause I was like, oh, I could have had like this extra amount of milk to give her, but I didn't have it. Anyway, my mind was just going through all this. I remember telling my husband like, 
you know, I'm kind of glad that this is happening because for you, this is going to feel like it takes a long time and I'm sorry about that, that you're gonna have to like sit there and wait for my surgery to be done. But for me, I'm going to get wheeled back there and I'm going to be knocked out. And then the next thing I know, I'm gonna be awake and this is gonna be over. And I was like, at least like my brain will shut down. At least I won't be like thinking about my baby during this time. Plus all the pain that I was in from my back, like, I remember when I went to the ER, I was like, I wanted them to sedate me, like, because I was in so much pain that I just wanted them to like, give me anesthesia and make me go to sleep. And so I was just like, finally, I get that. Like I can actually just get knocked out. And it was crazy because, you know, normally before a surgery, like, and I've had multiple surgeries before, mul normally before a surgery, I'm thinking about the surgery. I'm thinking like, oh, I'm gonna have to do this and this and this. And it was just like, before the surgery, the only thing that I was thinking about was my baby and how is she gonna sleep? And then I was just and I was just like, I'm ready to just be knocked out. And it was just like the weirdest, like so different than from all the other surgeries that I've had before that I was just like, I'm just ready to go, let's do it. Did not care that the nurse was telling me it was gonna be extremely painful. I was like, there's no way I can like I was like, yeah, I know the surgery is gonna be super painful, but I'm in so much pain right now and I have been in so much pain over the last week that like it doesn't matter because I'm still going to be in a super high amount of pain. And yeah, so anyway, I got wheeled back and I remember them asking me, they were like, oh, are you on your period? And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, are you guys gonna tell me before you put me under? And I was like, and they were like, oh yeah. And they did, they told me when I was going to start getting the anesthesia and I remember just going to sleep, like relaxing then and just like going to sleep. And then the next thing I knew, I was awake in recovery. I kept going in and out, like I would wake up and I would talk to the nurse and then I would fall back asleep. And I was like so out of it. I think they gave me like a ton of medicine because I don't know, I probably was trying to fight the anesthesia because that just sounds like something that I would do. But um, I just, I was going in and out of like consciousness. Like I remember I would wake up and I'd be like, ow, this hurts, can you get me a pillow? And I would ask for like a pillow. And then I would fall back asleep like before they even got me the pillow. And then I would wake back up and I would have like all these pillows. And then I had all these blankets, I kept asking for blankets. And some of these things like I didn't even remember asking for, but then like, I finally woke up for like real and I had, I had piles of pillows. I had like nine pillows and like seven blankets or something like that. It was ridiculous. And I was just like, huh, I must have asked for all of these. And I was on all of these medicines. Like I still had like anesthesia in my system. I wasn't in as much pain as I was in before I went into the surgery, but I still was in pain, which is why I'd asked for all this stuff because I was on like the recovery bed thing. Um, and they aren't very comfortable. And I was just like, oh, like I can't wait until I get into my hospital bed because my hospital bed is going to be so much more comfortable than this. And oh my gosh, like I wrote down that James was the best. I guess that was the name of the nurse that was caring for me because he really was. Like I would ask all of these questions and he would answer them all. I was supposed to be in recovery for one hour. I was there for eight. And that was horrible because the only thing that I wanted was to see my husband and my baby. And I said to them like, can, can they come back or or can it, like one of them come back and they're like, no, they, they can't, they can't come back here. They can only come back when you get into your room. And I was like, okay. And they were like, well, if you're going to be here for like this amount of time, then they can come back. And like that amount of time had passed. And I was like, okay, can they come now? And they were like, well, you're on the wait. You're, you're, um, you're next in line for a bed. So, um, you should be good. I know it's probably not a big deal and no one's going to think this is a big deal, but like, Remember when I was saying like I, the only thing that was concerning me was my baby. I wanted to see her so badly. And the other thing I was like concerned about was trying to figure out when was going to be the next time I could breastfeed or use or or pump. Like obviously I could pump whenever, but I would have to pump and dump. I wanted to know like how long until I could use the breast milk and I wanted to know which medications were okay for breast milk and which ones weren't. 
And so I was trying to find all this information out. So I was calling like my husband and um, they were like talking to the pharmacists and whatever and they were getting all this information. At one point my family care doctor called me and he was like, we were trying to return the call about the breast milk. And I was like, oh, okay, you can tell me. And he was, I was like, I'm in recovery right now. And he was like, oh, well, I don't need to talk to you then. And I was just like, well, no, it's okay. I can, I can listen to you. But I think he was like, thinking that I wasn't going to remember the conversation because I was in recovery, which like fair. So I think he like hung up and called my husband. Anyway, it took so long. Eight hours seemed like forever. Um, and the nurse was telling me, you're not staying in a private room. You have another person sharing the room with you. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, Cause I had never done that before. Like um, I'd never, like didn't even cross my mind that that was a possibility, which like I understand that that's a very common thing that happens in lots of hospitals, but like literally never crossed my mind. And I was like, oh, okay. So like that was a surprise. And just know that like I'm a person that like plans things out and likes to know all of the information beforehand. And so these next turns of events with me, like just being surprised by everything that happened is just so not normal. Like normally when I like get a surgery, like I know like what exactly is going to happen. And this was like, I was just like, it felt like I was just like learning a bunch of new stuff for the first time. So it's like, oh, I didn't realize that I was going to be sharing this room. And he was like, oh yeah, it seems like it's a sweet old lady. The hospital is too small for the area. So, and that's why it's taking so long to get you a room. And that's why you've been in recovery for eight hours. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, and I, I felt bad because I remember being like, I look, I don't need a room. Like I'm not trying to be difficult here. I just want to see my family. But they just kept saying that like, they kept saying that my baby could not come back. Like that there was not allowed for her to come back. And I was like, okay, can I at least see my husband? And they were like, yeah, maybe. And then they like never let me see him. I was trying to stay calm and I was trying to like be nice and respectful and understanding of like how busy the hospital was. And I was like, but I just really needed to see somebody that, with a familiar face um, after going through all that. But yeah, so that was hard. Finally, it's like, I don't know what time it was. It was like 10.30 at night or, or I don't know, it was late. It was late at night where I finally got to my room. I remember they were like, okay, we need to move you from this bed to this bed. And they were like, wow, you've got tons of pillows and blankets. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I asked for a bunch of pillows and blankets. And I was so thankful that I had all those pillows and blankets because like, I don't think that I would have ever seen that many pillows and blankets again. It was incredibly, once I got to my room, it was incredibly hard to get anything. Like if I wanted another pillow or blanket, they would have, they were like, oh, I don't know. And then it'd take forever to give it to me. So I, I came up with like nine pillows and blankets and I got to keep like a certain amount of them. And then I took a certain amount back down and I'm like so thankful that I had those pillows because it would have taken me so long to get more pillows or blankets. I remember like they were like trying to get me from the recovery bed into the regular hospital bed and they moved me without permission and it hurt so bad and I got so mad at them um because like you know I was getting so frustrated um from not being able to see anyone and from them like stopping me from seeing people and I was just like look like you need to tell me when you're going to move me like it's not okay with me to just try to move me onto this bed like when this all happened to me, all the anesthesia and all this pain stuff is wearing off. It's starting to wear off and it, things are painful. Like my back hurts and I don't even know to what degree it hurts now after, after having the actual surgery. And I just got mad at them. And as I was getting wheeled into my room, I saw like a glimpse of my family. Cause like I had told them, I was able to tell them what room I was going to. I remember being so tired because I never went back to sleep after I really woke up because all I wanted was to see my family. So I was so awake and so focused on like doing whatever I needed to do to see my family. I felt like I needed to prove to them that I was awake enough and like remembering enough stuff because I knew from surgery before that they didn't let me see people unless I like was awake enough and so like I never went back to sleep and I was exhausted like completely exhausted from having the surgery because of all of like the medicine that's in my system and whatever my body is going through 
and it was like 10 30 at night and like i told you i got to the hospital like 4 a.m or something like that and i just i saw my family and i was like oh, there they are i was like actually relax for a second and then they were getting him into the bed and they moved me without my permission i got so mad and me getting so mad basically just like means that i was like starting to cry because like when i get frustrated i cry and when my family got there i was crying and i was just like i wasn't crying before this they just moved me without my permission it hurt getting into the bed and you know how this whole time i was waiting for this hospital bed to be more comfortable than my recovery bed it was less comfortable it was the recovery bed was way better and i was just like can i have this bed back and they were like no these are the beds we have and i was like yeah okay fair you need to give this bed to someone else it wheels it makes sense but like oh my gosh it was so uncomfortable i finally saw people but i was so exhausted finally i could relax once i saw people i felt like i just wanted to go to sleep now that they were there and i could see them um so i met with them and i basically um my husband was allowed to stay with me overnight um and everyone else had to go home so they all went home and I'm just like watching my baby leave and she's so excited to see me. And also like she, it was, she looked like she was, you know, scared, confused. And it made me, gosh, I'm remembering this is making me sad. It made me so sad because whenever I would like say ow or I was in pain, she would look so scared and she would be like, what is going on? Oh my gosh, I really did not expect to cry. Anyway, then I had to send my daughter on her way to like make it through a night without me and I just knew it was gonna be so rough and so hard. But I was so thankful that my mom and my dad and my sister were there because I honestly wouldn't have even trusted anyone else with her, but it made me feel better that they were there, but I still wanted to be there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't even expect this. Okay. Um, anyway, my night nurse that night was so awesome. Um, I think her name was Samantha too, and but she went by Sam. And she was amazing. And she would bring me things and she would ask me if I needed stuff. And she would bring it. She was great and it really set the bar high because after that, nothing was that good ever again. <laughs> Um, I think she, I think it like wasn't her regular shift and she had like gotten called in for some reason and it's not even like her regular place to be, but she was just absolutely amazing. Anyway, this person that I shared the room with, her name was because obviously I'm never going to forget her. She was this old lady that had suffered from a stroke and we had these curtains like separating our beds anyway she was extremely loud and extremely confused because she had had a stroke and i felt so bad for her because she didn't have anyone with her she didn't have any family with her she just had these nurses and she was probably waking up and getting so confused but whenever she would wake up she would like scream for a nurse and she would say, somebody help me, somebody help me. Anyway, this was constantly all night long. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, we'd, we couldn't even sleep for like one hour at a time, which you know I'm used to because of having a baby. But like, when you're in that much pain and, and stuff, it's, it's really hard. Oh, my baby woke up. I'm gonna go get her. <laughs> all right, um, she took a short nap today. I wasn't expecting that. You coming back over? Um, so I'm not going to be able to finish this video today, but I guess this is a fine stopping place. Uh, we'll do a part one. This will be part one, and I'll film a part two at a later date. So yeah, sorry about me freaking out. You coming up? You want to read that? You want to read that book? Come on up. Um, I'm gonna get you down. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss like the second update and um, check out other videos if you want. Yeah, that's all, bye.